Drag and drop is a common interaction that allows you to move things around in a UI. To add drag and drop to our app, we're gonna use React Beautiful DND, which allows us to add this library and easily add it to our project. So to get started, I created this simple list of characters from the TV show Final Space. This currently doesn't have any kind of interaction, it's just a text list with a little bit of styling. In the code, we can see that I'm creating an array of all these characters with some image references, and then I'm looping through inside of an unordered list and creating each list element. And then I'm adding my CSS, which allows me to style it a little bit. So when adding React Beautiful DND, the first thing we want to do is add the package to our project. So we can go yarn, add React Beautiful DND, copy and paste that right from the GitHub page, and we can install it. And once that's done, we can run yarn start again to start up back our project. And we should see no changes in our app yet. Now that we have it installed, the first thing we want to do is add the drag drop context. This is going to allow the library to actually be able to see into the components so it can provide the logic to make the drag and drop work. So at the top of our file, we can import our drag drop context from React Beautiful DND, and then we can wrap our entire list with that drag drop context component. And again, if we look at the page, we should still see no difference. Next, we want to add the droppable component. This is going to set up the area where we can have our individual items moved around. So similar to before, we want to add this to our import statement. And again, we can wrap our list with that droppable component. The difference is this time we're going to wrap it in a function that's going to allow us to pass additional information from the droppable component. We're going to add an argument of provided, which then on our top level list, we're going to spread provided droppable props. And we're also going to provide a ref with a value of provided inner ref. And finally, on our droppable component, we want to add a droppable ID, which we can really set to whatever we want, but let's set it to characters so we know what it is. And if we load the page, we can still see that nothing is happening yet. We set up our list so that we could use it for a drag and drop area, but we haven't made those individual items draggable yet. To make our items draggable, we're going to use the draggable component. With this, we're going to wrap each item, that way we can set it up to be used within that our draggable area. So to start, we're going to import draggable from React Beautiful DD, and we're going to wrap each of our list elements with that draggable component, just like we did with our other components. Let's also move this key up to our draggable component. Here we want to also add a draggable ID, which we can set to our ID, and we also need to set an index, which for this, we can also add the index argument from our map statement, and we can pass that right into index. Finally, just like our droppable component, we want to create a new function where we're going to pass in details just like before. Here we're going to set the same argument of provided, where we're going to spread our provided draggable props, and we're going to set a ref of provided inner ref. And for this list component, we also want to add one more, which we're going to spread out provided drag handle props. Now, if we reload the page, we can see that as soon as we hover over an item, we can actually move it around. But if we notice at the bottom, anytime we move something down, our footer moves up into our area. If we open up the console, we can see it's because we're not providing a placeholder value. To fix that, at the end of our list, we can add another value called provided placeholder. And if we reload the page, we can move it around and see that our spacing isn't getting messed up, and we also can see that we're not seeing that warning in the console. Finally, the last issue is if we move an item around, we can see that it doesn't save its state. Anytime we move it, it doesn't save where the location was and reverts right back to its original location. To fix this, we're going to take advantage of the onDragN handler that we can pass right into drag drop context. With that, we're going to take advantage of React state so that we can save the order of our list. So to start, I'm going to import use state from React. I'm going to create a new instance of state and we're going to call that characters. We're going to add the function to update characters, which comes from use state. And we're going to set our default state as final space characters. Then if we switch our final space characters map to the characters array, we can see that nothing is yet changed. We're just using our state on our drag drop context component. We're going to add a new function called on drag end and set it equal to handle on drag end, which we're going to create that new function called handle on drag end. We're also going to pass in an argument of result, which we can then add a console log so we can see what that value looks like. And now when we move an item, we can see that object console log out and we can see things like destination, which is the index of where it was moved to, and the source, which is where it originally came from. So in this function, I'm going to paste in this little snippet. Here, we're going to create a new array from our characters array called items. With that new array called items, we're going to use splice to find out that original index and we're going to remove that from the array. When we remove it, it gets returned as a new item, so we can grab that value to use later. Next, we're going to go back to our items array, and we're going to use splice again, but this time we're going to find the destination index because we then want to inject that item back into the array at its destination value. And finally, with our updated items array, we can update our characters back to that items, which will update our state. And once that character state is updated, it'll go back through and remap all of our items. 
So now we can go back to our page and move around Little Kado, or Mooncake, and we can see that they keep their place. Finally, as one last thing, if we drag our characters outside of that area, we can see that we get an error. The issue is when we try to splice it, we don't actually have a value from the result because we tried to drag it outside of the droppable area. To fix this, inside of our handle on drag end function, we can make sure that if the result destination object does not exist, we can return out of that function. And now if we try to move somebody outside of that droppable area, we can see that it just snaps back and doesn't throw an error. So if you follow along with me, you learned how to add drag and drop capabilities to a React app. Using React Beautiful D&D makes this easy with a great API that we can really customize to whatever we want. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.